Ladies and gentlemen, I think it's good morning to you where you are, but certainly greetings from the European Union here in Brussels. My name is Matthew Baldwin and I'm the European Coordinator for Road Safety and Sustainable Mobility. And I'm delighted to be with you, if only in virtual form, in Omaha, Nebraska, for what I understand is the first edition of the Bus World Academy. My apologies if the joke has already been made or indeed banned, but Bus World Academy does sound a bit like a Steve Guttenberg sequel to Police Academy, in which case this video of mine is going to be by far the dullest part of the movie. In any case, that joke seriously dates me. But I am very pleased to be able to say a few words about the crucial dimension of safety, and I want to take a bit of your time to tell you about the European Union's approach to this issue. Each year, 25,000 people die on Europe's roads. And I want you to think about three extraordinary things about that number. First, that we accept what is patently unacceptable. It's the equivalent of two fully loaded passenger planes crashing each week in the EU with the death of everyone on board. No one would accept that level of death these days in the air and we shouldn't accept it on the roads either. Part of the problem, in fact, is that we persist in talking about these deaths as accidents, when, you know, as if they're things that just happen, when we know what needs to be done to prevent them. Second thing, that even with 25,000 deaths, we are the best in the world at road safety. We are somehow top of the grisly league table of road deaths, or bottom of the league table. I hate to point it out, but expressed in the standard definition of deaths per million of the population, the US is more than 20% worse than our worst performing member states, Romania and Bulgaria. But we're not proud of our numbers in the EU. Only in road safety does 25,000 deaths put you at the top of the league. Thirdly, even with 25,000 deaths, we've improved a lot over the last 50 years, coming down from over 200 per million in 1972 to below 50 per million last year. But boy, do we still have a lot of work to do. Going by bus is one of the safer ways to travel by road in Europe. Collisions involving buses account for less than 1% of all road fatalities, and buses are involved in just 2% of all fatal crashes. But as you will appreciate, because fatal bus crashes tend to involve multiple fatalities, often of vulnerable young or elderly people, they generate a tremendous amount of concern and dismay. I'm thinking, for example, of the absolutely terrible crash of a bus with Belgian schoolchildren in a tunnel in the Swiss Alps in 2012, which killed 28 people, including 22 children. So it's understandable that bus safety is as important a topic for us here in Europe as it is for you in the US, and a key part of our overall safe system approach, sometimes known as Vision Zero. As the name implies, this is about committing to achieve zero fatalities on the roads by 2050, with, in the European Union, an interim target of reducing our death numbers by 50% by 2030. Again, I think we need to break out of our preconceived notions here. Sometimes we talk about 90% of fatalities being caused by driver error. This is quite wrong. It generates this sense of powerlessness, of ine inevitability in the language that we use. Of course, everyone makes mistakes from time to time, but the safe system means developing layers of protection against those mistakes. Vehicle safety, infrastructure safety, protective equipment, speed management, and so on. Remember, no one needs to die from mistakes on the road, and no one should die, even if a crash occurs. Fine, but how do we do that? How do we go about achieving that in practical terms, in terms of regulation? In an organization like the EU, one of the tough things we've had to figure out is who does what? in areas like road safety. Road traffic law remains for member states. For example, what speed limits to set, how to enforce them, what fines to levy. But as you know, the EU is also a big single market project. So vehicles built in Germany are sold in Portugal without further checks, which means in turn that vehicle safety standards need to be fully harmonized throughout the EU. This has turned into a great European success story for vehicles as a whole. Cars, trucks and buses are all infinitely safer than the death traps of the 1970s and 80s, which risked death for occupants and other road users alike. Front and side protection, airbags, these changes have played a great role in driving down the number of deaths and serious injuries on our roads. Again, for buses, 
Our European rules mean that all buses since 2006 have had to be fitted with safety belts and passengers are required to wear them. Our European rules, you'll forgive me as a Brit when I say how proud I am to say those words. These rules, going back to 2009, include provisions on the strength of the bus superstructure, mandatory lane departure warnings, advanced emergency braking systems. And now buses have to be fitted with speed limitation devices that prevent them from traveling faster than 100 kilometers per hour or around 62 miles per hour. There's a similar split between European and member state competences in other areas of road safety. Driving licenses are issued by each member state, but because so many drivers routinely cross borders, especially professional drivers, this is now done under a harmonized European model, which, for example, sets out common knowledge and testing requirements, and for bus driver licenses, a periodic medical check. European rules also require mandatory training, both in order to get your license and then at each subsequent five-year interval for all professional drivers covering such things as passenger safety, maximum working periods, and so on. Another part of the safe system I want to discuss with you briefly is a commitment to improve, because, as I said, we must not accept our current high level of road safety fatalities. So we're going to be reviewing our driving license legislation and our European recommendation for blood alcohol levels. Remarkable as it may seem, for example, not all member states have yet set at zero the permitted level of alcohol in blood for professional drivers. And we're also intensely proud of our new vehicle safety rules set out in the revised General Safety Regulation, which has just become law. The new rules mandate direct vision for bus and truck standards, which will drastically reduce the deadly blind spots for truck and bus drivers, enabling them to see much more of the road around the vehicle and hopefully preventing the unnecessary deaths of many pedestrians and cyclists. Buses will also be required to be equipped with a detection device to warn them of vulnerable road users nearby, with driver drowsiness or distraction warnings, reversing safety aids and data recorders like the airplane back box, black box. And last but not least, we're moving forward with ISA, Intelligent Speed Assistance, which will, on top of the absolute speed limiter of 60 miles per hour, help drivers manage their speed to ensure that they're in line with the local speed limit and other local factors. The time is not long in coming, in my opinion, before we have non-overridable speed limiters on all vehicles, particularly in the coming age of automation. But in the meantime, ISA means fewer deaths and serious injuries, fuel and tyre savings, less wear on vehicles and roads, lower CO2 emissions, and ultimately, with a non-overridable ISA on all vehicles, things like speed bumps and other expensive and clunky parts of our infrastructure can be removed. Last point, this European safety strategy is a floor, not a ceiling. In London, for example, for the purchase of new buses by TfL, Transport for London, they've brought forward rules to require non-overridable ISA to be fitted to all new buses since 2018 as part of an ambitious overall bus safety standard, proving just one more part of the safe system, namely that we can learn from each other. And I hope that London's experience in terms of procurement of new buses will be taken up by others. Ladies and gentlemen, it's pretty tough listening to me when I talk for more than 10 minutes, even when I'm there in person. So I should absolutely stop now. But I do want to thank you for including bus safety so prominently in the program of the first Bus World Academy and for inviting me to speak on this item. I very much look forward to joining you in person for the next edition. And in the meantime, please accept my warmest best wishes for a very successful conference. Thank you for your attention.